Hi, Steve. Yep, I emailed it. Did you? You're welcome. Thanks. Sheena, I'm going to test out sharing my screen real quick. Great. It is, I think, already recording, but <laughs> just so you know, it does it automatically now. Oh, uh, well, that's good. Hi, sorry. I was just, I, I just reinstalled my operating system. <laughs> no worries. Can you hear me now? I can. Thank you. Okay, can you guys see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, stop sharing. And Hey, Eric. Hey, Robin. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Just went through several days of changing OS hell. Oh, man. Good times. Apple does not make it easy. No. I need to figure out some sort of filter where I don't look like a tomato with glasses and facial hair. <laughs>
good news is I'm, I'm within a couple of days of finishing my novel. Oh yeah. First draft. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Oh my God. It's been, it's been years in the making yeah. and uh, it's pretty exciting. It's what's, what's funny about it is that the, the flow of the last, the last couple of chapters has been amazing. It's like, it's, it's like the, riding the flume at, at Splash Mountain, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Which I think, I think, you know, probably speaks well of, you know, what, what has gone on before, you know? Yeah. Very happy. Yeah. Okay. Eric. Yeah. Eric. Yeah. Eric. Yes, yeah. Can I, you hear me? I can hear you. It's you're kind of freezing a little bit. Okay, I'm going to have to move. Virtual Steve. Can you hear me better now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I had to move, so. Uh, so is this who we have tonight? No, we should have more. And we, oh, we just got the quorum <laughs> when Amanda actually logged <laughs> <not> on. <laughs> yeah. But I know uh, Bob and Amy, Amy might be a little late, but Bob should be on too. Okay. I miss Bob's Alpine Mints. Amy's trying to get on right now. Okay. We've had a really tough time. So. That's weird. Um, I'll reach out to our IT guys and let them know tomorrow. Okay. Uh, is she on? She's not, but we do have a quorum. Okay. You can't start it. Okay. Okay. Um, I've got 518. I'm Steve Borst. I'm the chair. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Uh, good to see everybody. Uh, Hi, Steve. Okay. Um, has, uh, have, have you been able to uh, look at the December 7th minutes? Okay. Yes. Okay. 
Could I have a motion to accept those minutes? I move we accept the December um, minutes. Okay. Second. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Uh, same sign for not. Okay, they passed. Uh, January 4th minutes. Has everyone had a chance to look at those? Okay. Could I have a motion to accept those? I move to accept. I second. Okay. okay. We have a first and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Any abstentions? Okay. They passed. Is there, let's see. Oh, I'm sorry. Need to do roll call. <laughs> Okay, um, so Eric, you're here. Uh, Amanda Bressler. No? Okay. Amanda Blaisdell. I'm here. Bob Brown. He just got on. Okay. Yeah. Bob, are you here? <laughs> I think I, uh... All right, sounds good. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay, Barbara Kaufman. Okay. Amy Roberts. Amy and Barbara are both trying to log in right now. I'm actually communicating with them by phone and email. <laughs> okay. Oh, no. Okay, Robin Steele. Here. Okay. And Eileen Wynn. Here. Looks like you're here. Okay. Sorry about that. So it's my first day on the job. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. So is there anyone from the public online? Okay. I'm not hearing anything. All right, so the minutes have been approved. All right, scheduled business. Okay, Eric, you're up. Yeah, um, so I wanted to talk to you guys about the, uh, essentially the policy that would be leading us to going fine free. And um, what was mentioned at uh, the meeting way back in December was a little more, uh, you guys wanted some more data, a little more uh, of the actual, kind of financial numbers. And so I put together kind of a brief PowerPoint here that I'll share that um, goes over those. And um, hopefully this works. Um, I'm always, can you guys see my screen? That just- Yes, yes, yes. Awesome, okay. Uh, okay, so- um, go all right there we go um so the the total um as as of as of yesterday when i had my it guy pull up uh, the most recent numbers uh currently we have thirty two thousand seven hundred and fifteen dollars in outstanding late fees and uh to be clear again these are just late fees those do not include um lost items lost and damaged items just late fees um just over half of those fees, um, 16,000 or more than four, four years old. Um, I, I point that out um, because the, like, the likelihood of us ever seeing any of that 16,000 from is, is, is very, very low. The, the older the fines, the less likely uh, they are to be paid. Um, right. you know, that's just uh, pretty, reasonable um that makes sense yeah so um and um let's see so uh how that how those fines kind of break down or fees uh break down by patrons uh so that's that equals four, uh just over four thousand two hundred patrons have those overdue fees um 535 of those 
um, patrons are blocked, um, meaning that they can't check out items uh, because uh, they've kind of reached the fee threshold. Um, and then um, 2,000, just over 2,000 people have uh, uh, fees that are under $5. And what's interesting, I want to point out about that is um, about a, a half of those, more than half of them, um, are, are current and active patrons, um, meaning that they've, they've done something, they've used their library card in the last two years and it's not currently expired. But that means over half of them aren't using their library card. And, you know, I don't have any, any data or any way to know this information, but it, you can kind of draw some thoughts that perhaps they're not using their card because they have those library fees. And, um, you know, uh, we're constantly trying to clear up misconceptions about library fees and, and what they are. And, and you know, um, many, many library patrons, once they, uh, once they think they have any sort of library fee, think that that automatically means that they can't use the library anymore or they can't use their library card. Um, so, I, I would, I'd be uh, willing to uh, guess that many of those people um, with those fees under $5 aren't using their cards because they think that they can't. Um, and so that's kind of one of those barriers that I've talked about previously that, that uh, library fees have tended to, to create. Um, and then just real briefly, um, this, is, this is the amount that we've actually collected um, the city has on record of us collecting the last two years in library fees. Um, again, no, this is just uh, fees, not lost items and things like that. So um, that's, that's $7,000, uh, just over $7,000 that's been collected in the last two years. Um, as you can see, uh, even, even if the library were able to keep all of that money, um, that's not a significant uh, uh, portion of, of revenue for the library. And when you factor in the fact that we would actually only get about 7% uh, of that, so 500 or $600 uh, uh, of that would come back to the library. Um, you know, those are, um, uh, those are, those are pretty small numbers. So I think as I, the more I've dug down into the library fees, the more I've realized just how kind of a small number that is for us, um, you know, just for those fees. And, and again, that barrier that it does create uh, for patrons. So um, that's, those are the basic numbers I have uh, that I wanted to share with you. I have uh, some others, uh, but they got, a little too in the weeds and a little too specific, but if you have other questions, I'd be happy to answer any. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing and uh, let me, what, uh, and first, I guess, are, are these the kind of numbers that you were hoping to see or, or wanted to see as you made these decisions and made the decision by going fine free or? So Eric, I had a question. Oh, sure. <laughs> Can you guys hear any background information? Can you guys just hear me or do you hear the sewing going on too? I just hear you. Okay, I just didn't want to bother anybody. Um, so my understanding is with those fees, you don't get to keep them. We, we keep 7% of right. those. So the rest and of it goes to on, the general fund. On replacement items, what's, what's we, the turnaround? We do keep the replacement. Um, that 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 works a little bit differently. So yeah. 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 So as oh. long as we had the replacement still there. Yeah. But yeah, the fees are. Um, I was under the impression that we didn't get the fees on the replacement books. Um, I, I might ask Sheena to kind of weigh in on that because she's actually the one who deals with like the more uh, the the nuts and bolts of how how the uh, fees and and that's been part of the challenge too is separating fees from fines and things like that. So if Sheena can weigh in for just a second. Hi, Barbara. Yeah, those fees do go into a fund that we um, 
basically purchase, um, it's supposed to be the replacement items, but sometimes the, the replacements aren't needed. And so, because maybe it's an old book or whatever. Okay. And so the collection developers will use those funds for other purchases. You may have, um, I have a question, if you don't mind, you may have touched on this um, when you referred to uh, being blocked out by the amount of fines that people have. So is the, is the max fine that somebody can accrue with that $15 or so does it stop? Oh, no, 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 it can, it can go um, fairly high and um, my IT guy uh, pulled some of that information for me. We have about 123 people who have fines of more than $30. Um, and, um, you know, we, the highest one we have is 97 just in, in fees, in overdue fees, which is, um, that's, a, that's an impressive amount to rack up. So what generally happens is uh, they checked out a whole bunch of books, forgot about them for about six months return and probably never see them again. So <laughs> never see that patron again. So well, I guess the, my question is, Eric, it's, it's like as you negotiate with the, 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 the city fund at our at our seven percent level it's like how, even ninety seven dollars I mean how much of a drop in the bucket yeah. does that end up being and how much of an argument would it be to just eliminate that um, because we, as you as you said, you know, it's like if it discourages people from using the library, yeah. that that's that's a, that's a a, a a a small and a large price to pay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, you know, I, I I don't have a good feel right now. Um, uh, for as I said, you know, uh, city council would have to make the this ultimate decision. Um, uh, I don't have a great feel for how their thoughts and talking to other city staff and other directors. I think I mentioned, you know, I reached out to them uh, and, and they're all, again, this is um, all relatively small amount of money to them as well. Right. So um, right. they're, they're all confident that they can, um, you know, whether, whether those lost funds that they would, uh, missing from the general funds yeah i mean we you know we, sh we should obviously be a public service not a revenue generator and 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 thank you by the way for 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 you know sending out your your um your memo in advance for this for for, for this week this this month's meeting um but it really seems to me that The, the, the amounts that we're talking about in terms of fines, I mean, obviously there has to be, there has to be some sort of um, structure to it, but I think it's probably more in terms of, to, to, just in my opinion, it seems like it's more in terms of, of lost or missing yeah. items than it is in terms of, uh, you know, overdue fines, because if it does it, if it does discourage people from using the library, then you're, we're, we're doing a disservice to sort of the pledge to the community. So Eric, why do we, why, why do we um, find people for being late oh, yeah. with their books? Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's, um, it's a good question. It's kind of a historical. Um, you know, the the notion has always been that it, um, you know, if you don't find them, people will just take the books and keep them, or um, or, and you know, I as I think I mentioned, you know, many of the libraries that have gone fine free have found that that simply hasn't been the case. That their their return rates have not either have actually improved or have not changed at all. Um, people are uh, returning items just as well. Um, you know, there's, there's some in the, in, um, there, there's some thoughts from people that they think there's an aspect of us teaching, library finds teach 
personal responsibility, which, <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think, it, you know, for if you if you lose an item and uh, you have to then buy that item, then I think, you know, I think that's that that's a lesson. But I think an item being late is it. it I, it, it feels more punitive than it does um, necessarily, um, you know, encouraging, um, you know, responsibility. It, it feels like a, a punishment for the sake of a, of a punishment, so. Agreed. So, so are we ready? I mean, is tonight a night to make a motion for that? Have you already decided what's the action that needs to happen? So the action would be um, you, you can make the motion um, to change that policy and then I would take that to city council. Um, I don't have the timeline when I would take that to council. Uh, I, I need I would kind of hash that out. Um, generally, the, generally council uh, likes to see all the fees at, at once, um, all the different departments fees at once and be able just to vote do that all in a blanket way, um, but that that's not that's not necessarily um, uh, written in stone. We can certainly do one-off fees, and this might be worthy. Of so, I I'm in favor of not doing that. So, I would move that we eliminate late fees, um, so as to be more welcoming and more, you know. Get more people in there. Okay, so a motion has been made on the floor. I'll second the motion. Do we have a second? Okay. Yes. Okay, time to vote. So those in favor say aye. Aye. If you want. Aye. If you want. Okay. Uh, those in favor of continuing the current policy, same sign. Aye. Aye. So what's the vote? Gina, three to two. I, I believe uh, four to, uh, who was the no's? I know Bob was, who was the second uh, no? I was, Steve. Okay. So it's four to two. Okay. So the motion passed. So no fines. So um, yeah, again, we'll we'll take this. To, I'll take this to council, and I'll keep you guys posted on that um, how that proceeds. Um, if I may, yeah. What my most of my questions were about lost materials and replacement materials. Yeah. Um, and I'm not even sure exactly how to approach this because the 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 idea of both extraordinary circumstances being brought into it, it seems seems a little vague. I mean, just in just in, and I'm talking just in terms of the wording as we're going to present it to council. Yeah. Um, what constitutes that? And there's is also uh, I, item number two is the retail price of items will be consulted with sources, quote unquote. And I don't know what those sources are. And um, that, that you, I guess, Eric, or a designee will be charged with determining whether replacement copies, like if somebody brings in a replacement copy for a loss for what's considered a loss piece. Yeah. Will be accepted. And I think, I think that it, it, I, I'm just I'm just saying I'm, if, if I were if I were a council member, I would probably have questions about what the criteria are for those items. Yeah, yeah, no, that's that, that's a good point. And, and you know that actually kind of uh, touches back to our uh, the collection development policy, the previous collection development policy. So, those sources um, as to where we would look for the prices, those would be the same 
same same sources that we use when we purchase the books. Um, you know, we, we went ahead and um, if you remember, those were originally listed in our collection development policy, but the, it, it was kind of like listing the stores that you shop at, <laughs> essentially. It just, it didn't really, it, fit, it didn't fit in with a policy, but, you know, you can, it's kind of the, the current market. So, you know, we, uh -huh. we would use Amazon. We would use, you know, our, our, our booksellers that we purchase our books from. So, okay. um, you know, that to establish the price. And as far as like looking at, um, you know, if somebody brings in a replacement copy, and this certainly does happen, um, not all the time, but um, uh, on occasion where um, a, a patron will bring in, you know, they'll lost an item and, and, maybe they what they what i often find is they won't contact us first to tell us that they've lost the item what they'll do is they'll come in they'll have already purchased the item from amazon and just say hey i have this book i purchased the exact book and and you know um you know that would be for us to look at usually we'd have to at minimum we have to make sure that it's the same isbn um that's usually right. kind of the a key for us and then after that, if it is, then it's just kind of condition. If it's, you know, I mean, if it looks like something that would still hold up on the shelves and is okay, is not uh, covered in mold or something like that, then <laughs> probably add it. I mean, in general, we're probably going to be more lenient to somebody really putting forth the effort to kind of remedy that, so. You know, and, and, and my, my comment is, and my question is not so much about the principle of it as the semantics of presenting this to city council or whomever has to agree to these policies, you know, in terms of the, the, the specifics or vagaries of the, the wording, that's all. Yeah, it'll be um, it'll be interesting. It'll be an interesting discussion. <laughs> so, Mr. Chair, for the record, yes. I'd like to explain why I'm opposed to the staff proposal. I think it's important to have this in the record for the council to be aware of my opposition to the proposal, and that's it. I'm not really opposed to forgiving individuals' debts at some level um, and, and freeing these patrons from, from bondage. But, but I am opposed to, <laughs> to a fine-free library because fines are a library revenue and they are also a citywide revenue. And it's gonna be needed for the future. I'd like to add that I think it's a bit disingenuous right now to propose this idea after all of us work to support the fee override. And we all, I suspect all of us voted for it. I know I did. And then immediately turn around and tell the public, well, now we want to eliminate time as revenue. And it's just like, that doesn't seem very logical. And so um, I'm, I'm okay if we want to set some kind of a, a limit of forgiving some of these debts, um, but because I don't want to hold people in bondage. But on the other hand, I think this is a this is a, a bridge too far, way too far for me. And so I'd like the record to reflect that. Um, and you know. Lastly, you know, the library is a community resource and people enter a contract when they decide they want to check out a book and, and we give them, you know, a certain period of time to check the book back. And if they don't return it, then they can go ahead and ask for an extension. And I know the library is very good about giving the extensions. And so I feel it's a kind of a social responsibility to return the book on time. Um, absent that, a fine should be levied. It's, a mind, it's just kind of a means of reminding the patron of their contract between the city and, and themselves. And you, you know what happens here is if they don't return it, then someone else has denied that use of that book. And so, so I, 
I just can't, I just can't, I just think this is a bridge too far. I just can't support this. So I hope the record reflects my position. Thank you, Bob. It's a good point, Bob. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Just, just to clarify, I do have, so Eric, you mentioned that the library receives 7% of the, of the late fees as a revenue income. So, and you said it's, it's been about $7,000 the past couple of years um, in late fees. So that's, you know, less than $500 um, that the library is actually receiving from the late fees, um, which, I mean, it's $500, you know, but um, I think in the big picture, that's uh, a, quite an insignificant you know, amount of the budget. Um, and I think that um, kind of to Eric's earlier point, um, you know, this, this $500 that's missing from the budget, you know, if we were to just el if eliminate these fees, we would almost definitely see, you know, a $500 worth of increase in patrons, you know, checking out books. Um, Agreed. I think that the issue though, isn't just the 500. It's the $7,400 or whatever it is that goes to all the departments. If you take every department in the city and then all fees goes into a big pot, uh, it's a sizable amount of money when you think about parks and recreation and all the other departments that are putting money into this pot. I, you know, if you, if you want to get down to the, an issue, you could go ahead and say, well, the money that the library gets is going to go directly to the library. It's not going to be distributed to every department. And I would think parks and recreation would feel that way too, because we in the library enjoy some of the money that comes from other departments. I, uh, I just think that we're a little short-sighted here on this. I, I think you need to make a distinction between fines and fees. And these are fines, these are a penalty. This is not a fee. No, I'm I'm on, and, and, I'm but not, you keep... I, just don't, I understand the distinction. It's a fine okay. because you didn't return your book and denied other people use of that book. I don't want to get into a, you know, a debate over this issue. I just feel that I want to make sure it's in the record what my position is, why I'm proposed to the proposal. Okay. Thank you, Bob. Okay. So, Eric, so is there anything else on this issue? Don't think so. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So, Eric, you want to talk about the registration policy? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this is a this is one this is kind of a newer one we've been uh, working to update, um, and um, you know, really, um, like I, like I said in my memo, a lot of this is house cleaning. Just um, our policies weren't meet, weren't matching our actual procedures, um, basic things like that. Um, but what I do um, uh, want to point out, is, one of the things that I mentioned in, in the memo is an example is the, that's not listed in the policy, but is in the uh, procedures is, is the, the change of um, potential of lowering the age of which a somebody could get a library card. So right now they have to be um, they're considered a, a child if they're 17 or younger. So, um, and would need their parents' signature to get a library card. And um, that um, has felt to, to, to a lot of the staff um, to be a, a little restrictive and, and kind of a, a high age, uh, especially when the other expectations you have of of somebody who is 16 or 17 years old, the fact that, that, you know, you would trust them to drive an automobile, but you wouldn't, well, you may not trust all of them to drive an automobile, <laughs> but, um, you trust some of them, but then you, um, but then you wouldn't trust them to get a library card. Um, and and I, I mentioned this as, as, uh, to, to, to bring to you guys, because it, um, in lowering the age, if we were to lower the age, there there could be a you know ramification, or there could down the road be a a, a patron who would see um, or, or uh, a sixteen year old checks out a book that perhaps their uh, parent does not feel they should have been able to check out. Um, so 
um, lowering that age and, and not requiring um, a signature from, from a parent is something that could cause a, um, you know, a future point of contention from a community member. Um, as I mentioned, most, uh, I don't know if I did mention this in the memo, I apologize. Uh, most libraries have a, a lower age. Um, it's usually 16 um, or 14 is, is right around there. Um, some of them go with more language around uh, once they're, once they start high school, that would be considered, um, they, well, it is, it is interesting. I talked to a lot of staff about this, just with seeing it practically. Um, it is kind of, interesting to see somebody who is 17 years old and nine months and tell them that they have to go get their mom's signature to get a library card. Mm -hmm. um, it feels a little strange. And, and one of my staff members actually mentioned that when she was 17 years old, she was in college and living in the dorm hundreds of miles away from her parents. Ah. So she was she wouldn't be able to get a signature to get a library card if, the, if that were the case here. So that's that's really one of the key pieces I wanted to talk bring to you guys because I think that's a, a board issue, but uh, or you know potential just like the collection development policy. Um, but then you know I, I'm there are some more changes in here, and, and like I said, a lot of this is just kind of cleaning up um, some language. So um, you know I don't know that we necessarily have to go to into detail about specifics tonight if if you don't want um to i mean like one thing that we hadn't updated is we hadn't updated the the dollar amount for the non-resident fee it was still listed as 50 dollars instead of 80 dollars, which has now been over a year since that that that's changed so um but um so i i i think i would just recommend you know um because i in, in further looking at this, I think there's some more things that uh, library staff need to work out some details on. But um, so I would like to, to kind of take to the time to do that and then bring this registration policy back uh, to you guys in, in March. Um, Eric, can I ask a question? So um, if you're a student in Albany schools and gaps, you're eligible for a library card. How is that different than a regular library card? Um, there, there are some circulation limits on on how many on items and, and things like that. Um, it's it's not you know with, with a full library card you can check out up to a hundred items. Um, and really? Yeah. So I think that uh, needs to be lower. Hundred seems a bit much. <laughs> you know, you know that that is. Um, I, I've seen. I don't think I've seen anybody do that. Um, and that, and I, I should clarify that it's that that's total library items. That's not like. You can't check out 100 DVDs. It's like 10 DVDs, things like that. So, um, but yeah. So with a Gaps card, they are limited to um, the number of items that they could check out. And um, do, so, do they need a parent signature to get the Gaps card? So actually, with the Gaps card, it's an opt. Um, originally, um, when that started, it was an opt in. The parents had to opt in to get the library card for uh, their student, um, but now it's actually a, an opt out. Um, the parents need to to sign to say that they don't want the library card. What um, and I think that program unfortunately has been very hard to evaluate these last couple of years um, because of everything happening. Like I can say, um, the the library card sh should be. You, students should be getting a, a student ID um, that would that could serve as their uh, Albany Public Library card. But uh, we have seen hardly any students come in with those cards. Like I can tell you, my daughter is in the first grade. She does not have a student ID that would be that could be used as a library card. Um, she has an account at the library that has been set up um, because um, our. IT guys work together and exchange the information to, to coordinate those accounts, but they don't actually have, um, most of the students currently don't have functional um, student cards that can be used for library cards. So, so they don't actually get a card, they get- They use their student, their ID. student ID. Student ID, yeah. So does this, does this happen with the high school too, or is that a different school system because it's high school and it's not gaps? No, it's it's, no. it's the same. It would be the same. So um, yeah, and like I said, we we're just not seeing. So 
already a high school student could get a card without a parent's signature just by virtue of being in the right school district. Well, they could, they, in theory, their parents have granted, um, have not opted out of, of them getting a library card uh, through gaps. So, um, but, and, and I think there's a, there's an issue, there's an issue that I think that I, um, that I'd like to maybe share at the next meeting and maybe have some of my staff who are a little more um, first on, uh, on some of the ideas of um, what, you know, <laughs> students having their own, their own library card and, and how that has um, increases uh, their use of, of, of the library. Um, and I think that um, will be helpful for the next meeting. Okay, and uh, final question. Yeah. Okay, when I was a child, the libraries I went to, there was a children's card and there was an adult card. And with the children's card, you could not check out any adult fiction. So I would have to have my mother check out those. I was a big Perry Mason fan. And as a junior high school student, I was not allowed to read that according to the library. Uh, I mean, I could read it, but I couldn't check it out. So my mother would have to. So that's why I was curious. Is there a difference in the cards between what students get and what adults get? No, uh, okay. not, not, oh, really, not really. So, yeah. That's good. That's, that's an improvement. But yeah. Well, okay. um, in, in theory, the, yeah, any age can have a card. Yeah. From middle school point of view, my eighth graders were reading an adult book. And yeah. so the same kind of situation. But middle schoolers would think it was really cool to have a card like that, you know, because they're not driving yet. Yeah. But that library well, card is kind of enticing to them. So you're talking 12, 13, 14, 15 year olds. Yeah. I guess for me, the, this 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 section of the the memo, and again, thank you, Eric, for, for putting this for putting this out here in detail is the, I don't know, the minutiae of what card is worth what and who gets what card and the taxpayer card is different than the resident card and all of that. And I guess I would like that to be clarified somehow in, a, in the next draft. You know, it's like, why is it, why is someone who's paying taxes in Lynn County not considered the same as a resident of Lynn County? Because the taxes are, go different places. They don't fund, the county doesn't fund the library, the city does. Yeah. So you have to be a resident of the city or of to Albany. get a city okay, card. Okay. I, I, mean, I misspoke, I misspoke, you know. Okay, yes, but I, I think, I think, I, I don't want the point to be lost that the, these, these distinctions and and who's who is who is um, monitoring and enforcing these distinctions? Um, I don't when know, you just, get your when you get your card, you have to show your residency, and then that would inform a person as to where you lived. Right. And so you'd get either you'd not be charged a fee <clears throat> if you lived in the city, or if you lived out of the city limits you would be charged a fee. Now in Millersburg, Millersburg reimburses their citizens for fees charged by the city of Albany up to a certain, I think it's a hundred dollars a year huh. um, for different kinds of fees. But okay. that's, I mean, that's the difference. I mean, our taxes are paying for it. So if someone else wants to use it, they pay a small fee. Okay. I'm sure that's less than the taxes I'm paying for the well, library. That, that small a fee, it's 80 bucks in the, in the, in the memo we got. Yeah, yeah. That it, it, um, right. Yeah, and that's I um, mean before you joined the board, Robin. That was it was only fifty dollars, and that that non-resident fee had not changed in many years. Okay. Um, we actually voted to raise it be, because it to get it somewhat closer to what a, a city resident in Albany pays in their taxes. It's still not okay. anywhere near. Okay. Okay. And, yeah. As long as, as long as it's not discouraging. You know? Yeah. That's no. Good point. Yeah. Um, and the other, the other question I had is about, and, and, and I, and this is just naivete and being new to this process is what's a restricted card? Um, 
A, res a restricted card, yeah, those, we have very few of those. And, and what that usually is, is that, um, and this, uh, if a patron um, has maybe had a, had a history of not returning items. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it's, in, and then that's something, it's, it, it's, I, I would have to look at the record. I don't think we have hardly any of them. Or or they could have a restricted card if they don't have a current, um, if their address isn't correct. Uh, we don't have a current proof of address. So. Um, okay, fair enough. Yeah. It, was just, it, was, it was just a question. Yep. So. <laughs> All right. Any other questions for Eric about this? I don't. Okay, so uh, any business from the commission? The board, I'm sorry. Yeah. Says commission. Anything? Okay, Eric, so staff update. Yeah, um, so uh, a couple things I, I wanted to, and actually, you know, before we get into just a few more words, uh, I did want to uh, mention the prospect. So our next meeting is scheduled for March 22nd, which is spring break. Um, so uh, I would maybe like to ask if we move that March meeting to the 29th, if that would be, um, I know it might be better for, uh, and also, not only is it spring break, it's also uh, PLA, the Public Library Association, is meeting in Portland. So I have staff members who are going to be there that week. Um, so I don't know if, if, if it would be okay if we could move the March meeting to the 29th rather than the 22nd, if there are any objections. I don't know. I, I would not be able to attend on the 29th. I will not be able to be there on the 29th as well. Okay. Oh. I could do the week before spring break, but not the week after. Okay. I'm sorry, I misspoke. I'll be able to make the 29th. Okay. It's the 22nd that I wouldn't be able to. Okay. So. All good for me. I'll just zoom in from Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> <laughs> So Sheena, do we need a motion to change that date? Yes, please. Okay, so do we have a motion to change the next meeting from March 22nd to the 29th? Okay, I move to, I move to change the meeting date to March 29th. Second. Okay, okay. all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, it passed. So the next meeting will be March 29th. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, so uh, just briefly, I'll kind of uh, touch on a couple of things that I mentioned in the director in my uh, memo. Um, again, there is that the Oregon State Library uh, training that is happening on March 8th. If any of you would like to attend that, let Sheena or I know. Um, I've attended other trainings uh, put together by this organization and really well done and I think really helpful and I think um, would be beneficial for you um, both or all of you. Um, so if you're able to attend that and I, I apologize, I didn't put the time that that was there, uh, that that was there. Um, it looks good. Okay. Um, let's see. Oh, I skipped over, um, you know, we did, uh, our, our staff I mentioned has worked with the, uh, with GAPS and LBCC to kind of create a, a statement around intellectual freedom, uh, which continues to be a pretty hot topic. Um, thus far, things have remained fairly quiet on our front, um, apart from our previous challenge, but, um, you never know. It seems that these things seem to pop up all over the country. So, um, Let's see, uh, this Friday we get to do a staff in-service day and we're doing it um, 
This is the so the library will be closed. Um, this will be the first in person in service day that we've had in uh, two years. Um, so wow. we're we're pretty excited to have this, and I believe um, all but one of our staff members will actually be in 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 the building. So that will be the first time. Um, you know, and, and we're we're looking forward to it. And I really, uh, I, Amanda Bressler is not here. Uh, she's actually on desk right now, um, but she really is. Um, coordinates a lot of the, the training and she's put a lot of work into it and the focus this year is really on uh equity diversity and inclusion um and uh one of them uh Laurie, who you guys know uh who's come to the meeting she's uh, actually on the state library's uh equity diversity and inclusion board um uh, she works um a lot with them. So uh, we're, we're excited to kind of go through some trainings and get um, staff to speed on that. We have a guest speaker from uh, LBCC and um, yeah, and then we'll also have some time to like talk to each other and um, <laughs> um, we have some boxed lunches coming. And so it, we're, we're excited. It's a, it's a good day to kind of, um, you know, connect and, and, and get going. Um, and that's right. Uh, yeah. Uh, so and then today uh, the, is the official start of virtual library on court. Um, as I mentioned in the email, they did the, the pre um, the early bird special and that raised uh, th just over three thousand dollars. And um, I wasn't able to get in touch with Lori today to get an update on, on the fundraising mm -hmm. for that. But she said it's been going well. Um, and I do have to say, I don't know if you guys, uh, the prize for the early bird special was a box of some box of chocolates some ro roses and a bottle of wine. And uh, the gentleman who won was very, very appreciative that he had his uh, Valentine's Day taken care of. So, <laughs> um, so that was great. Um, and then, um, you know, you know, I, I I'm in doing the memo, what I would really like to do going forward is um, present, um, you know, I'm sure some of you have seen our the library calendar that we put together every month. I'd like to go ahead and kind of use part of that for my board uh, report to you guys, but also include some um, some more information. And so I'm, I'm curious, you don't have to have an answer for me now, but what 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 information would you like to know? What data can I provide for you? What sort of statistics? You know, the state library um, is, has, uh, I have one of my staff members working on compiling some of the data from the state library. You know, we all have to do our statistical reports every year. And one thing that we've always found that's been helpful, and I think I've shared this with you previously, is, is kind of comparing, comparing our circulation um, and, and usage and different things to other kind of similar sized libraries. So those are the types of things I'm thinking about putting in the board report, but I, I, I wanna know what other things you guys would find interesting. Um, like I said, you don't have to, you can email me, I can, and this can kind of evolve, but uh, I think, um, I think for, 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 my, for my sake, I think doing a board re report will help me continue to be accountable to you guys and keep, you know, keep things on the front burner um, instead of kind of at the whim and, um, and, and that. So, um, and then I would like to just mention, I think if we're comfortable uh, next month, I think we'll have the option to move back to a hybrid meeting um, or um, I believe the city's going to continue to be hybrid, um, at least for the, the commissions, um, for probably the foreseeable future. Um, but um, if you're willing to come on site, like we were able to do the previous meetings, I, um, you know, I'd be happy yes. to start doing that again, because you know, <laughs> it, it, was, it was so nice, that brief, that brief little while to be able to meet in person and then to kind of have to regress back to the, the virtual meetings has been a challenge, I think. And so, um, but I believe that's all, all I have for in way of updates. Um, just want to make sure that I didn't miss anything from my calendar. Um, no, I don't think so. And and I do want to bring back um, 
you know, previously we've been having library staff members come and kind of give yes. us on their departments and, and I will continue that um, in, in this upcoming year, so. Good, because that's really helpful um, for me, at least. And no, really I've enjoyed good. that too, yeah. Good, good. good. And, and I know, you yeah. know, the staff, the staff afterwards, um, some of them, get very nervous um, bef beforehand, but they've always, they've always felt really good afterwards and they felt really, um, you know, uh, appreciated the process and appreciated yeah, the opportunity. Good, good, good. So. No, it's, it's, it's really well, well worth doing. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Is there any other business or anything we need to discuss? Okay, so I've got 6.09 p.m. I'd like to uh, declare the meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, thank, thank you everyone. Okay, uh, bye. You work. Okay, see you the 29th, everyone. Okay, yep. good night. Bye.